Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while since I made a video uh, for YouTube. Uh, I was extremely busy at my work, but unfortunately, about a month ago, I lost my job and I've been preparing for interviews. It is a tough time and I am applying for, you know, a senior lead role, uh, architect role, which requires quite a bit of preparation. Nowadays, they ask you not only from algorithm, data structure, system design, and all kind of stuff, right? And I've I've had many interesting experiences, including interview at Google, which I will share in one of my videos. What I wanted to do is all the the, the knowledge that I acquired, uh, you know, in, in terms of preparation and giving out interviews and all that, I wanted to dump into uh, you know all these videos so that it will help you grow and pass. So I'm starting a brand new series on algorithm and data structure in JavaScript. All right, so to start the series, very first thing we wanna learn is something called big O notation. If we are gonna learn algorithm and data structure, we need to know how our algorithms are performing. And for there, there is a standard way of doing it called using big O notation. And if you try to learn this topic uh, in a, using a book, uh, you'll be lost because there will be so many mathematical terms. But here at Texit, we like to simplify things, and that's what we're gonna do in this video uh, with the simple examples. And welcome to Texit Tutorials. All right, so let's start with this line, just in case uh, your interviewer asks you to put big O notation in a sentence. So here, here's one. Big O notation allows, you to, allows us to compare the worst case performance of our algorithm in a standardized way. Uh, there are two keywords here. One is worst case performance and standardized way. Standardized way so that you and your interviewer can argue or which algorithm is faster using big O notation, which means uh, big O notation is universally accepted. So you can compare or define a performance of an algorithm. And Worst case performance, why do we need to look at the worst case performance? Well, in human, if you say somebody's good, then ha they have to be good in an extreme situation or worst case. If they're still good, then you know they're really good, right? So uh, similar to that, if you have an algorithm that performs a certain way in a worst case, then that's uh, the performance of the algorithm. So we're gonna look at in two different ways of uh, comparing algorithm. One is using its speed, means time complexity. And second is space complexity, which means how much memory does it use. Let's say if you want to move a house, uh, you are living in a, a place A and you wanna move to place B. And there are multiple ways to do it. One is uh, here at the bottom, you can hire a truck and put load everything, all your household items in the truck, and then you move from A to B. But if you don't want to spend money, you don't want to use that much space, you can simply uh, get this tiny things or you load your each box and then move from A to B and you have to do many round trips. Considering you live very closer, you would definitely save space. However, it's going to be much longer and you'll be tired. So this is the speed wise, it's slower, uh, but it requires less space. Uh, this one is faster, but it requires more space. Just to give an example of what is uh, time complexity and space complexity. But in terms of computer, how do you define speed, right? Uh, you have a speed of a computer, but that's we don't want to look at that because uh, you can have different speed of different computers. So we want to we want to remove that variable. We want to look at each algorithm in its mathematical sense. So when it comes to computer, what are the things we look at for speed? We look at um, how many reads or how many writes do we need for this algorithm to perform, uh, to solve that problem? How many comparison uh, of variables does it need? Uh, does it require uh, addition, subtraction, whatnot? And if you add all of those up, uh, that many operation defines how slow or how fast that algorithm is going to be. So think of these items as unit. 
For example, if I want to um, find the maximum number in, a, in, a, in an array of numbers, we have to read those variables from the array and then we have to compare them with each other. So for a given set of numbers, how many comparisons do you need? And that would define the speed. So let's look at an, a simple example. All right, so let's look at this algorithm, uh, finding maximum number from a, a number array. And here is a, an array of numbers. Uh, there are six numbers total. And we want to find the maximum. Obviously, you can see the 100 is maximum here. So I'm not going to explain too much, but there is a for loop which loops through every single number. And we take the first number and then consider that as a max. And if we find something larger than it, that, then we, we replace uh, max with that. And ultimately, we will have the largest number in this max variable. And that's what it is. And I've written this in JavaScript. Now, uh, you can see that uh, 100 is max here, and it comes out, which is correct. But the most important thing here we want to look for is the complexity. So how do we define the complexity? And here is the, um, the trick. For six items, six numbers, we are looping through, which means we are going through every single item, and we are doing this comparison here. That means um, for six items, we are doing six comparison. So if you define this as a function, let's say function of n elements, then number of then number of comparison that we need to do is we can say we need to compare uh, n times, right? Give or take. Not exactly, but n times, for example. It could be a little bit larger or, or smaller, but around n time, right? So for six, it's six. Here, if I extend this array to, let's say, 100 items, then I know, based on this logic, this particular algorithm, that uh, the number of comparison would also increase to 100. If I increase this to million, then the number of comparison would increase to million. So n number of elements I would need to make n number of comparisons, right? So this defines my speed. Now, what if you have five or six uh, less comparison, five more or five less? Does it really matter? Remember, we are looking at this worst case scenario. We're looking at a big picture. For that, five is nothing. What if this n is million, then five is nothing, right? So if, if it's five, n plus five, we still call uh, fn equal to n. And this formula can be simplified using big O notation, and we call it n. Basically, for n items, it's always n items, we are n unit of something, and this is a comparison, right? Uh, we call it O of n because it's order of n in this case. This is also called linear time. It's because as n grows, uh, as, as number of item grows, the complexity also grows with it at, at the same rate. That's why it's called linear time. Now let's look at a different problem. Um, instead of doing this, what if you want to add numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or let's say 5 numbers. If I want to add five numbers, I can do the same thing here, but instead of max, I can say uh, I can have the total and I would add each number. For six numbers, I would have to make six additions, right? And it would come up to similar complexity. It will be linear time. But if the numbers I've given are consecutive numbers, let's say here it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there is a simple formula. And the formula is a mathematical formula. So sum would be the number, which is 5 here, uh, multiply by n plus 1 and divided by 2. So for 5, this would be 5 multiplied by 5 plus 1, which is 6, divided by 2, and this would be 15. And if I want to verify it, I would say 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 
4 is 10 and 10 plus 5 is 15. So we get got our number, the sum, right? So if this is less than a million, I have a million consecutive numbers from zero to million. Uh, I don't really have to have any kind of algorithm where I have to uh, run through, you know, all the additions of all the numbers. I can simply do it using this particular formula and I would get the number within this three operation. So I'm doing actually one multiplication, one summation and one division. In this case, for f of n, this could be million, I'm only doing three operations. This actually, if I wanna bucket it, I can call it uh, O of one. I know it's three, but because three doesn't change with n, we can call it something called constant time. And instead of calling O3, we call it O1. Even if it takes, let's say, 10, we call it O1 because we want to bucket it. And so let's look at all these buckets that we can create. The starting with the constant time, which is time bucket. The next bucket would be something called log n bucket. Then you can have O of, let's say, square root of n, which is a little bit higher than that. Then you can also have O of n. This is the one that is linear time. Then from there, you can have O of n multiply by log n. And then we can have even more complex n square. A lot of algorithm are n square. And then if I want to go even higher than that, I can have n factorial. And so n square is something called quadratic complexity. And if you if you go over this quadratic and then it becomes exponential, but we don't have to worry too much about it, but you just need to remember uh, these complexities. So this many buckets. So if, it, if it's like a five, then you put it into this bucket of O of one, which is a constant time. If it's around log N, we put it into log N and so and so forth. And so now we have a like a universal lingo of if I say, if I have an algorithm uh, where time complexity of O of N, I would know that for n number of item, I would have to do n number of certain operations. Then I I can compare something that is written with O of n to O of log, log of n, and I can know I would know which one is faster. So now let's look at these in a, in a graphical way, so we can we would know how they are actually different from each other. And for that, I found a very cool tool, and it's called Desmos.com/slash calculator. I actually. So let's plot all these complexity, uh, starting from O of one. So if I wanna do O of one, I would say function of n uh, equal to one, which means constant, doesn't matter if it if I zoom in or zoom out, it always stays one, uh, which is very simple. Now let's look at the next formula, fn equal to log two, and as you can see, it's a different curve, but this goes slower at slower rate and over the time. Now let's look at the next one, which is as a square root of, root of n. So if I add another one, n, uh, there is a function square root. Now this, as you can see, this is a green line and it grows a little faster than log n. Now let's look at the linear time, which we looked at the first uh, example when we looked at the finding the maximum number. You now this is a day and night difference. You can see all of these are much slower rate. Now O of n, which is a linear growth, it grows really fast. As the number of item grows, this grows with it. So even though it's still not a bad complexity, but compared to log n and square root of n, it's much bigger. Let's look at the next one, which is uh, f n log two. Now you can see that it's growing much faster than, than, than the linear complexity. And one thing you would notice that they would never, around, around here, if I zoom in here, for a very short period of time, where log n uh, may be lower than uh, some of the other ones, but, and log n is maybe smaller than other one, but ultimately, as it grows, it they would never cross each other after that. 
So as you can see, they kind of go on their own way after that. They would never meet any point after that. So that is an important thing to notice. That's why we want to look at the worst. The last one, if you want to look at the f n equal to, let's say, n square. This one, as you can see, it grows much faster than even n log n. And I can even draw a factorial. It'll be like a straight line pretty close to the, the y-axis, actually. Okay, so now that you know what big O notation is, it's time to practice. And if you are uh, preparing for an interview, any problem that you solve with a specific algorithm, try to bucket it. Is it O of n or is it O of n squared? And see if you can do better than the current algorithm that you're trying. And that's how you improve. That's all folks. Uh, this is the first video in algorithm and data structure series. So there'll be more videos coming. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. And also please like and comment on the video. And you can follow me on Facebook. I have interesting groups, uh, uh, one on algorithm and data structure and one also on React. You can follow me for some interesting topics and you can ask questions as well if you get stuck. And you can follow me on Twitter and I have a Medium articles uh, page as well. Uh, I like to write sometimes, so you can check that out. And you can also purchase my courses. I have a couple of courses, one on React and one on JavaScript. And I'm planning to make a couple of more, one on interview preparation on JavaScript and one on algorithm and data structure. And thank you for watching.